Is Agatha behaving herself? <laughs> She's going through a rough patch. Thank you. 
Come on, Agatha, let's get you back. <laughs> Sorry, darling, didn't mean to bother you. How's about I get you something to eat before bedtime? Please, go inside for your sake and for mine. You know darn well about the coyotes roaming these parts. Just come back with me. Everything will be okay. <laughs> Welcome. What can I get you today? Hey, uh, I'm looking to get a parker for myself. All right, son. I've got a few models right down here. I'll bet you're one of them journal keepers, ain't you? Yes, sir. How did you guess? I've helped many journaling types over the years, my boy. You need yourself a reliable pen that'll draw the thickest and smoothest of lines and not hiccup once. Sounds great. Mind if I, uh, put him to the test? By all means. Nice consistency, but I think I'm feeling something a little easier on the hands, you know? Fancy yourself a lightweight pen, do you? Here, give this one a shot. My God, it's perfect. Almost feels like a, like it's a part of me, you know? As it should be, my boy. You know what they'd say. There are many like it, but this one is mine. In this case, yours. Wow. You've clearly been doing this for a while. Say, uh, what got you into this here pen business? Back in my military days, I'd been drafted for months at a time. My darling wife would work herself to the bone just to hold the fort down while I was gone. Fortunately, I was able to write to her very frequently, and when you write tons of letters, you start to become very particular about the tools you write with. Glad you were able to write home. You're a good man. I suppose after being a rifleman for so long, I wanted to put my life of violence behind me. You know what they say about the pen being mightier than the sword. Well, I says, this pen is mighty fine to me. How much do I owe you? Seventeen's your total. And when you feel like it's running on empty, come back here and I'll give you a refill, free of charge. Wow, that's all the kind of you. I do it for the good customers like yourself. When I sell a pen, I want them to know it'll last a lifetime. Well, I'll take good care of it. You hear? I'm sure you will. Say, what's your name, son? Jack. Jack Hanson. Well, Jack, I'll be glad to have you back anytime. Thanks. Hey, how you doing? My God, Jack, you've become quite the man, haven't you? How are you doing, my friend? Not bad, not bad at all. Busy life, you know. The missus said yes. She's expecting sometime in the next three months or so. And, uh, we're getting ready to head out to Baltimore. You know, start fresh. Well, congratulations. Give your wife my regards. 
So what can I do for you today? I can't stay too long. But old Reliable's fresh out of ink. Man, what a mighty fine pen she's been. I'm in the market for a refill. Ah, uh, yes. Just a moment. Here, son. Uh, Jack. I'm a man of my word. That's really kind of you, but I can't just take it. One sec. No, Jack. It's okay. I promised you a refill on the house. It's all right. Really. All right. Thank you. I'll be sure to stop by next time I'm in town. Have a good one. You too, Jack. Hey, chum. Your rent's due. But a bustling hot salesman like yourself shouldn't need to worry about it, right? What the hell happened here? Please, just cut the crap. Oh, what's the matter? Just having a little fun, guy. Stop. Yeah, since you're my buddy, I'll cut you some slack. 80% now, and the rest whenever you can. With interest, of course. <laughs> You're a dear friend, but I'm not made of money here. Swear to God, if you don't leave right now. All right, sport. I guess you mean business. You are a man, after all. Pay up. Hey, here's a thought. How about you get the hell out of my store? Now, you look here. You've been pulling this crap for months, and I've been letting you get off scot-free. You have it easy. I gotta keep track of thousands and thousands of places like this dump. And hope you rats actually pay what you owe. Do you want your money? Here, take it. <laughs> yeah, I'll humor you. The Mont Blanc 149. The black and gold one. Let me take a look, see. Thanks, pal. Quite the beauty, ain't it? If I were to buy this right now, how much would I owe you? 175. All right, no problem. Just give me a quick second. Here you go. Let's see here. We got this 175 you worked so hard to earn. Plus the amount you assaulted me with earlier. According to my advanced calculation skills, far beyond your comprehension. Ding, ding, ding. Congratulations. You're only 70% short. Don't worry, my fine friend. You don't need to worry about anything else. I'll take care of the rest from here. You can go home to your family, help your wife out with dinner, maybe sit down and play a game with the youngins. Be a real family man. You're free to go. <laughs> Thank you.
Getting caught in the draft. Not the wind kind. Wear the colors, the helmets. Be a part of the hive mind. Too old to be bossed around. Too young to die. The cycle of violence will be the death of mankind. <laughs> Gee willikas, that's good stuff. What else you got? I've heard many a tales from the men in the trenches. Soggy feet, grubby rats, a mixing pot of stenches. Ants in muddy colonies for days at a time. Mmm. Inches, inches, benches, quenches. Oh, stick it out and hope the grasp of war unclenches. <sighs> Throw yourself in the line of fire at the age of 21. Put down your pens and pick up a gun. When your own mother raises no objections, why did she bother raising a son? <sighs> Fuck this shit. Getting to ride in a tank. Once you rise through the ranks. No, it's done. Hope those bullets are only blanks. No! <sighs> okay. Mortar, hospital, purple heart, enlist, rations, mess hall, rain. Swords. <laughs> Imagine running in like Bilbo Baggins with your little dagger sized blade and getting absolutely blown to bits. <laughs> Out with the swords, in with the guns. Heavy artillery, probably weighing tons. The hell? They call it heavy for a reason, dumbass. Her golden locks blowing in the air, like the golden sun, a sweet summer flare. Hand in hand with the color of dandelion, the thought of being separated has me crying. Oh my god, that is corny. Man, I really like her though. What am I saying? It's not like she'd say yes anyway.
Jesus Christ. What the fuck? Get the hell away from me! Burn in hell, you wretched creature! What have we here? I'm done. I put out enough schmuck for one lifetime. I reckoned you'd be a fine poet. A modern day Paul. A dinosaur's probably rolling around in his grave. Hmm. Such senselessness. Allow me to peruse your writings. You're wasting your time. Don't even bother. Now, now, don't be so presumptuous, as beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Hmm. Hmm. You may be right, actually. Oh, come on! I reckoned you were mature for having recognized your own shortcomings. Yet you destroyed your surroundings for having enjoyed the creative process. You are a mere child, and nothing but. I have been busting my ass on this for years, and what came of it? Nothing. Not even the slightest atom of my work has ever amounted to anything. For shame that you do not recognize the concept of growth. For shame that you expect success to be handed on a silver platter. For shame to you for besmirching the efforts of your literary predecessors. And for surmising the worst in the one you love oh so dearly. Come, child. 
for you will no longer have to endure the harsh cruelty of the real world. Today I got in trouble at school. Jim took my favorite marble, the red and blue one with a swirly pattern. He made fun of me for asking for it back and shoved me to the ground. Him and his friends probably thought they were so tough, so I threw a rock at his head and he started crying. But Miss Cross found out and she hit me with a ruler. Doesn't sound bad, but trust me, it really does hurt. Mother will probably do the same thing. What are you supposed to do when someone does something bad to you? I don't want to just stand there and let them do whatever they like to me. They've all told us to tell a teacher when someone's bullying us, but Jim's able to fool anyone on the planet with this acting. Really hate that guy. But he could probably be in the pictures and beat out all the biggest stars. So, just as I expected, my parents whooped me hard a few times ago for hurting someone. That makes no sense at all. Because they taught me that I need to learn to stand up for myself, so I can be strong when I'm older. That makes sense. But it also doesn't, because if I don't stand up for myself, I get beat. If I tell a teacher they don't believe me, and if I fight back, I'm the one who gets in trouble. I can't do anything about anything. It's not fair. Today is the worst day ever. My buddies figured we'd go to this corner store after school, but when I asked my parents, they said no. What gives? The others told me their parents said yes, so why can't mine? I'm big and I walk to school by myself, so why is this different? It's not dangerous because we can all protect each other if some goons give us a hard time. Will showed me his dad's pocket knife today in the schoolyard, so that'll let us take him down if we need to. They're planning to go again tomorrow and I'm not going to be left behind. Okay, here's my plan for tomorrow. When I wake up to go to school, I'll tell my mom that I'm gonna go over to one of my friend's houses after school. I'll want to take the long way around, since my dad's shop is along the straight sidewalk. It has a big window, so if he sees me, I'm done for. He usually gets home around six o'clock, and walking there took about 20 minutes when I went with him. School lets out at 3, and if we head to the corner store right after school, I could probably hang out with my friends for 2 hours before I need to get home. I want to be home for a while so Mother doesn't get suspicious. I really hope this works. Got my parents on my trail. Told them I was headed to Doug's house after school to do homework. We have about 10 minutes until school's out, so I gotta stick it out until then. I can taste the soda pop already. I'll make this one quick since walking and riding is really hard. It just feels so good to have some freedom. I'm starting to feel like a real grown up. 
My friends and I just got it out of the corner store. I got myself a strawberry soda and a pack of jelly fruits. The man at the counter even gave me a Thai cop card. He's probably my favorite player. I usually like to get lime soda, but they didn't have any. This kind is really good too. I should probably finish everything before I get home so my parents don't find out. This has been the most fun I've ever had in my life. Forget what I said about yesterday being the worst day ever. My mother apparently walked over to Doug's house to ask his parents where I was, and they totally ratted me out. I don't know if I'll ever be able to go over to his place ever again. Heck, I don't think I'm able to go anywhere ever again. My parents said that I'm not allowed to leave my room for a week. I told them that their plan was a load of baloney because then I wouldn't be able to go to school, and my father told me not to be a smart ass. That's even bigger baloney, because they said that's a bad word. They should be in even bigger trouble than me. Once I get out of here, I'm gonna tell grandmother, and that'll get them real good. I almost don't want to leave school, since this is the only time I get to be out of my room until Monday. Math is super boring, but at least I sit at the back of my class. Mrs. Cross is really mean, like a witch. She's been giving me the stink eye since I threw that rock at Jim. He totally deserved it, by the way. Miss Cross looks like a horse's ass- Excuse me, young man. What have we here? Writing in your diary during class time? Is this what your parents sent you to school for? Math is super boring, but at least I sit at the back of the class. Yes, how very fortunate that you have the luxury of avoiding that Mrs. Cross, who you so generously described as, quote, really mean like a witch. How becoming of you to describe your superiors with such colorful vocabulary. Mrs. Cross looks like a horse's, a horse's what young man? Must I apologize for having interrupted your creative process? Perhaps this will be a better discussion to have with the headmaster. But miss, it was only... At least give me my journal back after. You will never be seeing it again for as long as you live. See yourself to his office at once or face immediate suspension. Yes, ma'am. Dear Lillian, hope you're doing well. Even though it has been years, I still miss having you here. I've been doing my best to hold the fort down since you've been gone. I'll be honest, it has been very difficult, and I'm sorry for having denied that over dinner. You made it very clear that I can talk about how I'm feeling and that it's okay to get help when I need it. I suppose I wanted to prove my independence and keep on working regardless of how old I've become. While the idea of moving to a retirement home crossed my mind, it was just never an option for me. To be frank, the thought of abandoning the thing we worked so hard to build up makes me feel sick. 
I apologize for taking so long to ask you out. I'll admit I was quite nervous when we first met and knew that gaining confidence would be essential. When we became close, I knew I wanted us to take on the challenges of life together. I'm happy it all worked out in the end. I found myself thinking a lot about the pen shop days. I remember that fantastic opening party we had after we broke our backs trying to get the place open. But all good things come to an end, no matter how that may come about. Fortunately, it paved the way for some new opportunities. Rekindling my love of poetry with you felt rejuvenating, considering how I initially felt about my writing. My tattered journal probably told you a lot about my younger self, for better or worse. We didn't quite become millionaires we dreamt of being, but sharing our work with the world made it a shot worth taking. I promise I'll start writing again during my spare time. I suppose I just caught too deep in the void of self-doubt. I will keep my head up and live the remainder of my life to the fullest. I love you, Lillian, and I hope to see you again in due time. Don't know where, don't know where. 